One of my favorite parts about podcasting is just being able to sit wherever I want and record an episode and type out my episodes and I just can think wherever and right now I'm sitting on my steps looking outside the window at the city and it's just such a pretty view and I'm really excited to record this episode today. What is up, guys? Welcome back for another episode of Raising Serotonin. My name is Sammy, and this podcast is going to be our safe space. I created this podcast for you and I both to be able to come on a platform and not feel alone. I created this for us to feel connected on things that make us uncomfortable to talk about or that people might not even know about us. This might sound a little fucked up, but just hear me out. I was diagnosed with BDD, which is body dysmorphic disorder, when I was going through all my eating disorder and anxiety diagnosis, which obviously gave me more anxiety and more eating issues. So hearing that at that time was not what I needed. But I'm really excited to actually talk to you guys about this today because it's one of my favorite things to talk about because I deal with this disorder every single day of my life and I have been working on this since I got diagnosed, I had to learn to love myself when I looked in the mirror or at a picture of myself. And I'm going to give you the tips that I do when I have a breakdown or how to stop me from having a breakdown, what I do to not even get close to having a breakdown, because body dysmorphia is not going to be the same for everyone. But for me, I deal with it in the lower part of my stomach being quote unquote puffed out is how I refer it to. I believe for a really long time in my life when I stood to the side and looked at myself in the mirror that my butt needed to be farther out than my stomach, like at all times. Guys, like I would eat a piece of an apple and I would go to the bathroom and run to the bathroom and make sure that my stomach didn't look weird and that I didn't look like I just gained nine pounds of fat from that one piece of apple when that's literally the last thing that would ever happen. You don't just gain fat automatically. Like It's water weight at first. And then if you keep deciding to eat shitty, then you're obviously going to gain weight. But I said I ate an apple and I still felt that way. Like, I was so fucked up in the head from this that I couldn't tell the difference from being healthy and not eating and eating the right foods and trying to fuel my body the way that I was supposed to. This disorder is a mental disorder that makes you think nonstop about that one thing that bothers the fuck out of you that not literally one other person can see. This doesn't just happen with girls either. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, just in the United States, 2.5% of males and 2.2% of females have BDD, like that are already diagnosed. And 2.5 and 2.2 may not seem like big numbers, but really it affects a great amount of people day in and day out. And it's a scary, scary dis- disorder. I had this idea in my in my head to talk about this topic a couple weeks ago, but I really didn't feel 100% ready. I've honestly had to work up myself over the weeks that I've been able to just sit at home and really contemplate what I wanted to talk to you guys about and be open with you guys because that's a huge part of your growing process is being open and vulnerable. And last night I was watching Botched, which is on E! And it's like a, it's a sh- if you have never heard of it, it's a show that two plastic surgeons are completely ethical. Like they do not do any plastic surgery unless it's like you got messed up from another surgeon before. And that's why it's called Botched. And on the episode I was watching, a 21 year old male went to South Florida for college and got so in his head by the people around him. He developed BDD on his own and got chin and jaw implants that ended up fucking up the rest of his face like later down the road and I'm pretty sure he was still in his 20s but guys like he literally surgically placed things in his face because he didn't feel good enough he didn't feel like he was the best looking guy down there and I know that's not really something to hold on to while you guys while I talk to you guys about this but (laughs) like he literally was so mentally unstable with the way he looked he couldn't even look in the mirror until he had implants in like that is so mentally not okay 
So back to the point I was making, it's not the same for everyone. But what you can do to calm those demons is something we all can do to better our mental health and just our view on ourselves in general because we really, really need it to be a positive view and not a negative view. But I am personally on medication and have been since I was diagnosed. So if you are on medication, it is more than okay. If you are not on medication and don't think that you would like to be on medication, there are other options for you. This is a multi-step process for me to heal and because, like I said, everyone else is different. So just want to put a little disclaimer in here for you guys. I'm not a licensed therapist or anything in regarding mental health. I am just trying to make us feel not alone and I want everyone to feel important. But if you do feel that you have a serious mental health disorder, please reach out to your doctors or your loved ones for the proper support and treatment. Because what I'm about to share with you are things that I have been practicing since I was diagnosed and have worked for me personally. And I hope what I have learned can help you achieve euphoria as well. But this healing process takes time. It takes effort. You have to want to change. This is not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a week. This will consume a good chunk of your life. But once you can stop seeing all that negative shit that isn't real at all and love yourself, the amount of freedom that you can feel and have from healing is, oh my God, guys, it's the most iconic feeling ever. Like that is euphoria, is feeling free from these demons that are in your head 24-7. Before you can even let anything bother you for the day, drink water. That's it. That's your first thing. As soon as you wake up, you open your eyes, you breathe, and you drink water. I actually like to get out of bed before I do this, so I'm not like just laying there and then like fall back asleep. So I also like to stretch and hydrate my body at the same time. So, but this is my first step in not just fighting off demons, but also just like part of my daily routine and function. It may seem dumb or silly to like just say like this is your first step. But you don't you don't know until you try it. And after doing this every day for a long period of time, it becomes a routine for yourself. And without it, you don't feel like your morning can be complete. Now that your body is hydrated from drinking the water in the morning, remember to just put on your most comfortable clothes. And even if it is your work clothes, like get clothes that are 1000% comfortable. And I've said it before. I'm not going to never, ever say it again. I'm going to say it until it's in your brain. But for me, I wear leggings and sweatshorts and t-shirts on most days because I don't feel constricted in any way, shape, or form when I'm wearing those articles of clothing. When you're comfortable, your brain doesn't do much thinking. And when you're uncomfortable, you don't stop thinking. Your brain just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and it's telling you these bad thoughts if you have this disorder because that's what we are focusing on right now. It's like, oh, well, why do you look that way? What are you doing? Why why does she have that on and you don't? Like, it's just like these negative things in your head. And whenever I wore jeans or a dress or anything, really besides a big t-shirt, I felt like I looked like I was 400 pounds. Everything made me uncomfortable and I couldn't even sit down without feeling like my skin rolls on my stomach like i had no fat i was a little over 110 pounds there wasn't anything on me (laughs) except skin like i couldn't look anyway besides a stick but my own brain i literally thought i was this huge person and i barely even ate and like there was just no way for me to look 400 pounds but i had this horrid horrid vision of myself whenever i looked in the mirror but when you feel your best you will be comfortable and confident. So that's why you have to wear your most comfortable clothes. You're going to have to remind yourself every single day that you're comfortable and that you're okay and that we can get through this. And this next step is just for anyone that just wants to achieve euphoria in general. It does not have to just be specifically for people with BDD or any type of mental health issue. But the next step you need to take is to stop playing the comparison game. You need to stop playing this game right now. That is a mind, a thought, a confidence killer to the max. What I used to do is screenshot pictures of girls with abs and thigh gaps and like send them to my mom and just be like goals or this is what I want to look like when I did look like those girls, but I was just so unhealthy. A lot of the people who have the ideal thing that you want 
normally get it from genetics. Unless you know for a fact that they have had surgery or something or whatever their situation is. But I would be comparing myself to girls who didn't have the puffed out stomach like I did, like I mentioned before. I didn't I didn't get it. I didn't have to have that. But I learned that it, it's genetics and I will never, ever look like that because if I want to have kids, I have to have some sort of protection to cover my organs down there. And that's the end of the story. I'm not 400 pounds. I'm not the fattest person alive. I'm fine. I am healthy. And that's what fucking matters. Not if Steve, Carl, and Joe think I'm the skinniest girl at the party. Or if April, Chelsea, and Sophia are judging you because your shirt isn't buttoned the right way and it's making your hair look off. Like, no, shut the fuck up. Stop listening to people and don't let anyone compare you to someone else. Don't compare yourself to someone else. That is going to fight off so many demons when you get rid of that game. That is the worst game that you could ever fucking play. I recently just deleted my personal Instagram page because all it did was bring me competition and comparison and negativity. And I was so sick of it. Like, I still do do it to this day. I'm like, fuck, why am I not the skinniest girl ever? Because you're not supposed to be. Like, that's not cute. Be healthy, people. That is our goal out of everything in life is to have self-love, to be healthy, and to be happy. And that is so hard to do. But if you take the steps and practice these things every single day, you can be happy. Like, I swear to God, it's a thing. You're not going to be happy every single day of the year. We talked about that in prior episodes, guys. But you will achieve euphoria if you take the time to love yourself and to grow. Because it's not going to happen overnight. You're never going to be happy overnight. Seriously. There are things that you guys can do both professionally if you do need professional help in the medical field please 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 go get help it is okay you don't have to go to therapy if that's specifically what you're thinking of right now like I don't go to therapy this is my therapy but I am on medication and I'm taking the steps to better myself so I am doing the right things for me there are specific things that you have to do in your life and if you don't talk to the right people about it you're never going to know So go ask for help. It's okay. It's more than okay. It's actually recommended to ask for help. Ask questions. Ask about things that you care about that you just don't know and you're scared to look up. It's okay. People are going to talk to you like a human being. I didn't think that people would do that to me. I'd be like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. They're just going to be mean to me and think I'm stupid. No, no one's going to think you're stupid. Everyone just wants you to be happy and healthy. Seriously, guys, like that is it. And that's one thing that I want for you is just to reach euphoria at the end of the day when you can lay in your bed and put your head on the pillow and say that you had a good day today because that's all I want. All right. Well, I hope that this episode helped in some way, shape, or form. And if it did, can you guys please go to Apple Podcasts if you are on an Apple device and go to Raising Serotonin, scroll down, hit the five-star button, and leave a review as well. Please. I'm begging you guys. Like, I don't know what else to do <clears throat> to get you guys to help a sister out. Also, if you don't follow my Instagram, it is at Raising Serotonin. It's where I post all my motivational quotes and pictures of everything that you could possibly need and tips and advice and all of that beautiful stuff, as well as go follow my SoundCloud and Spotify. They're both at Raising Serotonin. Um, Honestly, actually, I don't think there's an at sign there, but anyway, it's just Raising Serotonin. I'm really excited about the future of this, guys. Like, we are heading places. We are doing big fucking things together and I am just, I'm just, I have euphoria. So I love you guys. I will see you next week. Bye.